Hey, this is Jeff Forrest, and my PowerPoint presentation will be about underground geothermal storage. I'm covering pages 39 through 68 in the Geothermal Energy Sustainable Heating and Cooling Using the Ground by Mark A. Rosen and Seikoe Fig. The Fundamentals Thermal storage entails a storage of thermal energy. Whether heat, thermal energy above the ambient temperature, or cold, thermal energy below the ambient temperature. Both heat and cold storage are widely used in industry. The main thermal energy storage types are sensible, latent, and thermochemical. Energy is stored by raising the temperature of a storage medium in sensible heat storage, changing the phase of a storage medium in latent heat storage, and chemically reacting a storage medium in thermochemical storage. Applications are numerous for some types of thermal storage and rare for others. Nonetheless, TES has achieved noteworthy market penetration. All types of thermal storage have practical applications. The design, operation, economics, and testing of thermal storage vary from relatively straightforward for mature types of thermal storage to complex for other types. The design and operation become increasingly complex for intermittent sources of thermal energy, such as renewables like solar energy as their temporal fluctuations must be matched with the independently time-varying demands for heat and cooling applications and such as building heat, ventilation, and air conditioning HVAC systems. TES thermal energy storage can facilitate the management of such temporal mismatches between energy demand and supply. Typical storage materials for sensible storage includes, include water, rock, and soil. Typical storage materials for latent storage include water, ice, and salt hydrates. Thermal chemical storage includes various reacting pairs of chemicals, with one sometimes being water. Sensible and latent TES are relatively mature, while thermal chemical energy storage is relatively new and in development. TES is seen in aquifers, boreholes, phase chain materials, and thermochemical substances. TES is often used with heating and cooling technologies. Example of, examples of TES are the storage of solar energy for overnight heating, of summer heat for winter use, of winter ice for space cooling in the summer, and of the heat or cool generated electrically during off-peak hours for use during subsequent peak demand hours. Advantages of thermal energy storage. The advantages of TES are improved operation of systems, load shifting, increased efficiency, improved operation of thermal equipment, facilitation of use of intermittent energy sources, facilitation of use of renewable energy resources, reduced environmental impact, and enhanced economics. For improved operations of which systems in which thermal energy is applied in the incorporation of TES into a system, such as heat pumps, power plants, code generation plants, can improve the operation of the system. For instance, TES facilitates improved operation of thermal equipment. It can allow equipment to operate more effectively and flexibly. Also, TES systems can complement heat pumps for heating or cooling by providing hot or cold reservoirs, thereby improving their efficiencies and performances. A code generation plant with TES not following a thermal load can be operated more advantageously. This helps overcome the weakness of code generation plants in that they are generally operated to meet the demands of the connected thermal load, which often results in excess electric generation during periods of low electricity demand. For load shifting, TES permits energy consumers to shift energy use from high to low demand periods. Also, since demands for heating, cooling, or electricity are seldom constant over time, the excess generation capacity available during low demand periods can be used to charge TES in order to increase the effective generation capacity during high period demands. This benefit allows smaller production units to be installed or increased capacity to be attained without purchasing additional units. For increased efficiency, Storing heat such as waste heat, solar energy, or cold can be used when needed. For improved operation of thermal equipment, TES can allow thermal equipment to operate more effectively and more flexibly, with more flexibility. 
for facilitation of use of intermittent energy sources. TES can facilitate the use of energy, source, energy sources which are not available continuously by storing energy between periods of availability and demand. Intermittent energy resources include waste heat, cogeneration, cogenerated heat, and renewable energies such as solar and wind. TES thereby allows intermittent energy storages to meet a greater fraction of the loads for which they are used. For facilitation of use of renewable energy resources, TES can facilitate the use of renewable energy sources, many of which are not available continuously by storing energy between periods of availability and demand. Such intermittent renewable energy sources include solar and wind energy. TES thereby allows renewable energy sources to meet a greater fraction of the loads and facilitate substitutions of renewable energy sources at small, intermediate, and large scales. For reduced environmental impact, increasing the efficiency of the systems that utilize TES and facilitating the use of renewable energy sources in waste energy can help reduce emissions of pollutants and environmental impacts. Climate change mitigation with TES has also been examined. For enhanced economics, many of the recently stated benefits allow TES systems to provide significant economic gains over their lifetimes. For instance, by facilitating the shifting of energy use to low demand periods, TES allows energy consumers subject to time of day pricing to shift energy purchases from high to low cost periods. Also, TES can allow thermal equipment to operate more economically. TES Operation and Performance TES systems are generally designed to operate on a cyclical basis, usually daily, weekly, or seasonally. In considering TES operation, it is useful to characterize TES systems according to storage duration. For seasonal long-term, long-term TES operates on annual or seasonal cycles and usually takes advantage of seasonal climatic variations. Seasonal TES systems have a, more, have a much greater capacity than daily TES, often by two orders of magnitude. Thermal losses are more significant for long-term storage, so more effort is made to prevent thermal losses in seasonal rather than daily TES. While diurnal systems can generally be installed within a building, Seasonal storage requires such large storage volumes that special care is required in locating the storage and separate locations are often required. The significance of long-term TES applications is growing in many parts of the world. For weekly midterm, midterm TES operates on weekly cycles and exhibits many of the characteristics of short-term systems. For diurnal short system, for diurnal short-term, Short-term, TES addresses peak loads lasting a few hours to a day in order to reduce the sizing of the system and or to take advantage of energy rate daily structures or to allow intermittent energy sources to be used throughout the day. The use of diurnal TES for electrical load management in buildings is increasing. TES allows electricity consumption costs to be re usually reduced by shifting electrical heating and cooling loads to periods when electricity prices are lower, usually during the night. Load shifting can also reduce demand charges, which can re represent significant, which can represent a significant proportion of total electricity costs for commercial buildings. In cold TES applications, several strategies are available for charging and discharging so as to meet cooling demand during peak hours. There are two main operating strategies, full storage and par partial storage. A full storage strategy shifts the entire peak cooling load to off-peak hours, a strategy that is more most effective when peak demand charges are high or the peak period is short. With partial storage, the chiller operates to meet part of the peak period cooling load, and the rest is met by drawing from storage. Partial storage systems are there for load leveling and demand limiting. TES types, sensible. Sensible TES systems undergo changes in sensible heat associated with temperature change. Some characteristics preferred for sensible heat storage are high specific heat capacity, long-term stability under repeated charging and discharging cycles, 
compatibility between st storage medium, its containment, and low cost. Sensible heat storage systems are sometimes classified based on heat storage media, liquids such as water and oil and solids such as rock. There are many types of underground TES. Heat or cold can be transferred to soil for storage and later recovery. Ground-based storages can be shallow such as earth beds or deep such as boreholes. The use of the ground as a storage medium is often simpler for new construction. The required below groundwork can make retrofits difficult, especially if work is needed beneath a surface, beneath a structure. Also, an aquifer can be used as a type of underground storage. By extracting water from one location in the aquifer for heating or cooling, and then re-inject it at another point in the aquifer for storage. Containers and tanks filled with a heat storage medium, such as water or rock, can act as a TES. Container tank-based storage can be located in or above ground. Such tanks are often made of steel or concrete because of their physical characteristics, cost, availability, and easy processing. Ceramic bricks can also act as a good heat storage medium, especially for uses in new building and old buildings, where they are advantageous due to their modular sizes, ease of installation, and high heat retention abilities. The container can be artificial or natural. TES types, latent heat. Latent heat changes are the heat interactions during the phase change of a material at constant temperature, for example, solid, from, or to liquid. Latent heat TES systems store or release thermal energy as a material changes phase. A latent heat change is usually much higher than a sensible heat change for a given amount of storage medium, giving latent TES a higher energy storage density. Latent heat TES systems incorporate a storage containment and capability for transferring thermal energy into and out of storage. Latent heat TES systems utilize storage media, usually selected to undergo phase change within the desired operating temperature range. Phase change materials include inorganic and organic materials, large fatty acids, aromatic salt compounds that absorb a large amount of heat during melting, such as eutectic salts, salt hydrates, and galber salt and paraffin waxes. The latter are common because they have good, they have a good stability and do not degrade notably over repeated storage cycles. The phase change material in latent TES can be contained in a single large vessel or in, or in small modules, for example, rods or plastic containers. The use of small modules provides great flexibility in latent TES applications. Latent heat TES can be used to store hot or cold. Cold latent TES typically uses the following storage media. Water, eutectic salts, glycol, brine, and icy slurry. In solar com combination systems for space and heat and cooling, large solar fractions normally require larger water volumes, but PCMs offer more compact alternatives. Heinz and Schranz offer demonstrate that PCMs are competitive with sensible storage for a small tank volume and low solar fraction, and that PCMs can be advantageous to traditional heat stored methods for seasonal storage. TES types, thermochemical. Thermochemical storage utilizes chemical reactions to store and release heat. It is based on a chemical reaction that can be reversed. The reverse reaction occurs when A and B are combined together and C is formed, releasing the thermal energy that is recovered from the TES. The storage capacity of this system is the heat of reaction when C is formed. Substance C is a thermochemical material for reaction and can be a hydroxide, hydrate, carbonate, or ammoniate, while A and B are reactants, which can be water, carbon monoxide, ammonia, and hydrogen. Usually material C is a solid or liquid and A and B can be in any phase. There are three main processes of a general TES cycle. They are charging, storing, and discharging. Charging. 
During the endothermic charging process, thermal energy is absorbed from an energy resource, causing the dissociation of thermochemical material C into two materials A and B. Storing. Substances A and B are stored separately using an ambient temperatures. Material degradation can lead to some energy losses, but there is little heat lost except during the initial cooling of components A and B after charging. Discharging. Substances A and B combine exothermically during discharging, allowing the stored energy to be recovered and material C to be regenerated for reuse in the cycle. Thermal energy quality. The requirements of thermal energy storage include storage capacity, storage duration, charging rate, discharging rate, and variability in thermal loads. The performance measures include the energy efficiency, the exergy efficiency, reliability, impact and application, health and safety, and lifetime. The system related limitations include the size or the volume, the surface space or area, and the installation limitations. The economic parameters included the initial capital cost, the annual operating cost, and the amortized cost and payback period. TES economics. TES systems often provide energy cost savings relative to the primary generating equipment required to satisfy the same services such as loads and periods, but often with higher initial capital costs. The economics of TES systems normally requires that their annualized capital and operating costs not exceed the cost of the primary equipment. The economics of thermal storage is usually evaluated considering numerous factors including temporal variations of heating, cooling, and electrical loads, storage system design characteristics, storage operation characteristics, costs, and other economic factors. Economic analysis of TES systems are important to their design, particularly since thermal storage sometimes has relatively high initial, cap initial capital costs, which are balanced against savings over time. Economic evaluation criteria often include simple payback period and return on investment. Payback periods often vary significantly with application. For example, from one to 10 years in many instances for cold TES systems. TES systems can be applied cost effectively in many residential, institutional, and commercial buildings, often exhibiting payback periods under three years. Testing standards. ASHRAE and ANSI provide testing standards for some types of tests, TES. These include ASHRAE standard 943, method of testing active sensible TES devices based on thermal performance, and ANSI slash ASHRAE standard 94.1 in 1985, method of test, testing active latent heat storage devices based on thermal performance. Note that these were originally combined in ASHRAE TES standard 94 through 77. Methods of testing thermal storage devices based on thermal performance. The Canadian Standards Association published information on the design and installation of underground TES systems for commercial and institutional buildings, which includes information on testing. Comparing thermal energy storage types. The storage masses and volumes needed are observed to exhibit significant variabilities. It can be seen that the storage having the lowest mass density requires a volume 15 times greater than the storage having the greatest mass density, while the storage having the lowest volumetric density needs a volume 11 times greater than the storage having the greatest volumetric density. Types and characteristics of underground TES. Soil and earth bed. Heat or cold can be transferred into underground soil for storage and subsequent recovery. Soil and earth bed TES systems are often shallow, for example, earth beds. The use of earth as a TES medium is often restricted to new construction, since the application requires installations in the ground beneath a structure making retrofit work difficult. Borehole. Borehole TES systems are often deep, up to hundreds of meters, consisting of a network of tube inserted, tubes inserted into boreholes drilled into the ground. 
These permit heat permit heat or cold to be transferred into underground soil and rock for storage and subsequent recovery. Borehole heat exchangers are manufactured, installed, and operated in a relatively standardized manner today. Aquifer. An aquifer is an underground reservoir in which water is located in impermeable materials such as clay or rock and moves very slowly. An aquifer TES is typically a permeable water-bearing rock formation. Aquifers often have large volumes exceeding millions of cubic meters and consist of about 25% water. In aquifer TES, water from the aquifer is extracted and heated or cooled. It is then re-injected at another point in the aquifer for storage and subsequent. With other aquifer systems, therefore, two well fields are often tapped, one for cold storage and the other for heat storage. Aquifer stores are, more, are most suited to high capacity systems. External thermal energy is stored in some aquifer TES systems, while the, natural under, while the natural groundwater temperatures are used in others. Rock cavern. A rock cavern can be filled with a storage medium and used as a TES. The storage medium in such systems depends on the ability of the cavern to hold it. Such TES systems are usually large. Container slash tank. Containers and tanks filled with heat storage mediums such as water or rock can act as a TES. Container and tank based TES types are not necessarily in ground systems as they can be located in or above ground. However, because they are often large and because the ground provides a degree of insulation, container and tank based storage systems are often placed underground. Such tanks are often made of steel or concrete because of their physical characteristics costs, availability, and easy processing. They can be used for new and old buildings. Solar pond. A salinity gradient solar pond is an integrated collection and storage device of solar energy. In an ordinary pond, the, sun, the sun's rays heat the water, which being less dense, rises to the surface and loses heat to the atmosphere. The solar pond inhibits this phenomenon by dissolving salt into the bottom layer of the pond, making it too dense to rise to the surface, even when hot. The salt concentration increases with depth, forming a salinity gradient. Sunlight, which reaches the bottom of the pond, remains trapped there as thermal energy. Useful thermal energy is recovered as hot brine. 